Hi everybody, this is Andy. Welcome to Med School EU. Today we're going to do an educational video on natural and artificial selection as well as some evolutionary theories. So we're going to begin with the chronological order starting with some of the first ever theories of, uh, of selection and how uh, evolution really works. And we're going to see how those theories eventually developed into Darwin's theory of natural selection. So initially we're going to begin with some of the first ever evolutionary theories that would be the old and outdated theories that we don't discuss now because they have been disproved to be real. And uh, the first uh, philosophers that really started talking about this would be Plato. And uh, Plato uh, was talking about uh, a phenomenon called typological thinking. So the Greek philosopher claimed that every organism was an example of a perfect essence created by God. And those types were unchanging. So Plato's idea was that organisms were unchanging. So there was no no evolution basically there was no change within organisms he did uh, claim that individual organisms on earth may deviate slightly from the perfect type but he said the deviation was similar to seeing the perfect type in a shadow on a wall so uh, even if there is a slight deviation the organism would still look exactly how it was created by god and uh, the key to understanding life in Plato's mind was to ignore the shadows and to focus on understanding each type of unchanging perfect essence. So he did not focus on the change. Plato and the typological thinking focused, focused on studying, studying the perfect perfect essence and what does this really mean well that this simply entails that they uh, did not focus on the change they focused on studying the perfect human being or the perfect bird or or the perfect elephant they were not focused on how those organisms were undergoing evolution or how those organisms were changing based on their environment. They were simply focused on that perfect being and, and it, at that time the philosophers felt like that was the most important thing to do. So of course evolutionary theories were not really introduced at the time. And today philosophers and biologists for that matter refer to these ideas that Plato's was preaching uh, as typo typological thinking because typological thinking is based on the idea that species are unchanging types and that variations within species are unimportant or even misleading. Now if we fast forward a little bit to uh, Aristotle he developed the scale of nature so we're going to discuss that a little bit. So not long after Plato developed his ideas, Aristotle ordered the types of organisms known at the time into a linear scheme called great chain of being, or in other words, they called it scale of nature. That's at least what they call it now. And Aristotle proposed that species were fixed types of organisms that were organized into sequence based on increased size and complexity. So basically an ant, would be at the very bottom and then upper up on the ladder so again this would be just a ladder right so ant would be here upper on, up on the ladder would be um, something like a small bird a small bird of course there's a lot a lot of other things filling in between but Plato or, or Aristotle really um, kind of went into this idea uh, that organisms are going to be based on their complexity so complexity and size now aristotle's ideas were still popular in scientific and religious circles 
well into the 1700s. So because of the dark ages, because of the suppression of science and suppression of new ideas by the church and suppression of new ideas by the state, everything was kind of halted at this part where Aristotle was uh, and his thinking was dominant until the 1700s and since many cultures had embraced Aristotle's model for for so long over 20 centuries the notion of lower and higher species lingers as a cultural habit even today in some places around the world so now after um, the dark ages we of course uh, started to get some scientists to rise up and uh, and, and discuss uh, some evolutionary theories. And the important one that we have to discuss for this IMAT exam is going to be Lamarck. And Lamarck devised the idea of evolution. So he was the first to ever say that there is change happening. They're not just fixed things that are on a ladder or they're not just fixed by creation of God. They were actually changing organisms. That's what Lamarck really preached. He also contended that species change through time via inheritance of acquired characteristics. So here's another point, inheritance of acquired characteristics. And to some degree, this idea is actually true, but not to the level that Lamarck has proposed. And we're going to discuss that in uh, the next slide. But here, I, we must know that this first was introduced by Lamarck. And this idea that inheritance of acquired characteristics was his first idea, not Darwin's. So... And what, what he really meant by this uh, inheritance of acquired characteristics is uh, basically, well, if, um, for example, a wolf is able to survive some um, critical event in their life, for example, they were starved, so it was starved for, um, for 30 days, and they were able to survive that, that means that ability to survive will be passed on to the offspring. Now, of course, we know it doesn't work like that. Your life experiences are not passed on to the offspring because the only thing that we share with the offspring is the genes that we already have. And you're not going to be changing any genes by uh, being exposed to a certain environment. So now uh, we are going to discuss our current evolutionary theory. And this is the one that has uh, the most scientific evidence, and that is natural selection, Darwin's uh, four postulates. And this is based on four critical observations that were made by Darwin and his discoveries that are still true to this day. So this was Darwin and Wallace that uh, came up with, uh, with the book the origin of species and this is where they highlight this uh, notion of natural selection. So the first postulate is that individual organisms vary in traits they possess. So all of this was very revolutionary because it broke down the original thinking that there is a ladder, that there is complexity and there's size and all of those things matter. When in fact, in terms of reproductive success and the ability of an organism to survive, it uh, did not have a particular connection in that in that way. First postulate states that individual organisms vary in traits they possess. So they are going to have, uh, you know, one organism is going to have blue eyes, another organism is going to have brown eyes. Blue eyes would be more attractive or vice versa and therefore they're going to have more offspring and that specific trait will be passed on to the offspring. Uh, and they will be able to reproduce and survive better than the ones with the brown eyes. Now, um, so that's just an example of what, uh, how this impacts. So individual organisms vary in traits they possess. The next postulate is that some 
trait differences are heritable. Not all trait differences are heritable, only some. So if you have, again, going back to the example about the blue eyes versus the brown eyes, and there is a chance that blue eyes are not heritable or eye color is not heritable or a certain um, feature that makes, a, makes uh, an organism more or less fit for the environment it may not be passed on to the offspring at all because the feature the trait must be heritable meaning that it must be passed on to the offspring and there's just genes certain genes that are not going to be passed on to the offspring so they must be heritable genes looking at the next postulate it's the survival and reproductive success are highly variable so uh, again going uh, to the notion that each organism is not dependent on their complexity and size it is depending on their reproductive success and that's the key point here survival and reproductive success and now we know that they're highly variable in each organism and each type of species the next point and the final postulate is that individuals with certain heritable traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. Uh, note the heritable traits here. That's the important part, that the traits have to be heritable to be passed on to the offspring and then those offspring will exhibit the same traits that have helped them survive and reproduce, that have helped their parents survive and reproduce. So that's the four postulates. You should be familiar with these postulates to understand how natural selection works and uh, the, the importance of those and how and their effect on evolution. So altogether, natural selection occurs when individuals with certain heritable traits produce more surviving offspring than individuals without those traits. Therefore, a frequency of the selected traits increases from one generation to the next. Again, those heritable traits will be passed on to the next generation, and that specific trait will be more pre prevalent in the population. Therefore, the outcome of evolution by natural selection is a change in allele frequencies in a population over time. So in studying this, these four criterias, you should realize that variation among individuals is essential if evolution is to occur. So if, of course, the entire population of the species has the same traits and the same genetics, well, they're not going to uh, survive very well because if they encounter an environment that is not suitable to their genetics, then all of them will, will die off. For example, if bacteria has the exact same genes and you apply an anti antibacterial agent or antibiotic onto them, they will all die and not a single bacteria will survive. However, if you have variation, so highly variable, if you have variation in the population, then a small certain percentage will be able to survive only because their genetics differ. But in general, biologists uh, usually condense Darwin's four postulates into two-part statement that communicates the whole essence of evolution. And that is evolution by natural selection occurs when one, heritable variation leads to two, differential reproductive success. Heritable variation leads to differential reproductive success. And that's uh, the basis of our evolutionary theory that we have today. And this is something you should be very familiar with uh, for the IMAT exam. And finally, we're going to discuss misconceptions about natural selection. And uh, this Talking about misconceptions uh, is what uh, opened the world for me about evolution and really understanding what evolution is because I could not uh, grasp at the very beginning when I started studying evolution in middle school, I could not grasp how come, you know, monkeys don't change into humans right now because that would be happening. Well, uh, that is a, 
that is the most basic misconception that people have about natural selection is that there is a change in individuals throughout their life and that's that's completely not true because it's a change change in population pa oops population not a change in individual but but the most important misconception that people have is that natural selection occurs to individuals and it does not it occurs to populations so individuals that have those successful genes are able to reproduce more and they're able to pass on those genes to their offspring now of course over time this occurs and over time you get evolution over thousands of years in in a specific species because those alleles are going to be constantly changing and they're constantly going to be adapting and surviving in their environment and this is all on the population level not on the individual level now the second misconception is that evolution is goal oriented and it is not so evolution does not aim specifically to improve improve fitness so an organism is not going to have a specific mutation in their genetics that will improve their fitness in the environment that's not what occurs mutations as we have discussed earlier are random a classic example of evolution being goal uh, directed as most people might think is they would say well um, bacterial cells wanted or needed the mutant or drug resistant allele so they could survive and continue to reproduce in an environment that included the the antibiotic now this does not happen the mutation that created the mutant allele occurred randomly due to an error during DNA synthesis and it just happened to be advantageous for the environment for the environment that has changed so looking at it in a different way the mutation that provided resistance did not occur because of the presence of the drug it just happened and it happened randomly so every mutation is equally likely to occur in every environment there's no mechanism that makes it possible for the environment to direct which mistakes dna polymerase makes when it copies those uh, those genes so adaptations do not occur because organisms want or need them that's an important concept and that's an important misconception that most people have about evolution so once you grasp these two specific ideas you will be able to grasp the idea of natural selection and evolution so this concludes our video on evolutionary theories and in the next one we're going to take a look at the genetic basis of evolution